How many of you have a significant other? How many of you don't have a significant other, but want one? <laughs> How many of you want out of the relationship you're currently in? Okay, no, no hands, that's good. Um, so, and how many of you are wondering why you keep attracting the same damn relationship over and over again? Okay, I'm about to share this with you. So pay attention, because this, this stuff is cool and it's valuable. There's usually one in each relationship. Nothing I'm about to share with you is 100%, because there can be two cats in a relationship, and there can be two dogs in a relationship, but most of the time, there's a cat and a dog. The cat is attracted to the dog, because they see in the dog what they think they don't have in themselves, which isn't true, because nobody's 100% cat and nobody's 100% dog. We're all a little bit of both. <laughs> However, and, I, and you're all gonna tell me, well, I think I'm both. Well, true, you are, but there's gonna be a bigger percentage of you that's more cat or more dog, okay? And your partner, coincidentally, or not so coincidentally, will have, and I, there's even a test I can give you, will have the opposite percentage. If you're 70% dog and 30% cat, your partner is probably 70% cat, 30% dog. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting how we're attracted, opposites actually do attract. And we're gonna tie this into sales in just a second. Now, here's the traits of a dog. They're right brain. So they're emotional, they're spontaneous, they're, uh, they learn and hear literally. They speak inferentially though, meaning they don't always say what they mean. They, they're spontaneous, they're impulsive, they're social, they love large groups of people. They can be in the Starbucks line and strike up a conversation with anyone, even people they don't know. They love to be the center of attention. At a party, they're loud, they're boisterous, they're the class clown, they love to be, they like the attention put on them. They're affectionate, they like to be held, they like to be touched. Because their number one unconscious fear is rejection. Rejection destroys a dog. So having that number one unconscious fear, you can see why these other behaviors become so important. You need to show a dog that they're important. You need to tell them they're loved. You need to touch them and hold them because that means there's nothing wrong with them and they're not, you're not rejecting them. You follow? Let's talk about cats. Traits of a cat. They're left brain. They're more logical. They're more analytical. Things have to make sense. They're kind of in that space most of the time, not all the time. Um, they learn and hear inferentially. They speak literally though. They say what they mean most of the time. Then they're just, that's why they come off cold and, and ruthless sometimes because they just get to the bottom line and say it like it is. They're contemplative and they're cautious. You ever see a cat? They're kind of, a new person comes in the house and they're like checking you out, you know, checking that person out. Whereas a new person comes in the house and most dogs are like, <laughs> I love you. I don't know you, but I love you. You know? Um, love me back. Anti, they're, they're not, antisocial may be the wrong word to put up here, but they, they like small groups of people they're familiar with and small groups of friends, except in career. How many of you are noticing these qualities in yourself or your partner already? Okay, it's like, what, what, if, what if you're, uh, like, you like cats, but. That's what I'm saying. If you're a, I know you're a dog. You know how I know he's a dog? I know he's a dog. Because dogs sit in the front of a room like this. Cats will tend to find chairs way in the back. They don't want to be, they don't want you to me to ask them a question. They, they kind of want to hide in the back. They don't want the attention put on them. Dogs tend to sit in the front. He's been responding to all my questions from the very beginning. Automatically, I know he's a dog. There's nothing wrong. It's cool. It's great. You're a dog. <laughs> back to cats. They don't necessarily like all the attention. That's why they sit in the back of a room like this. They don't want me to call on them. Unaffectionate. They, they, okay, unaffectionate may not be the best word either because there are times when they're affectionate. Have you ever noticed a cat? A cats are affectionate. The animal. The animal. When they want to be a pet, they're like... <laughs> but when they're done, they're done. They're like, <laughs> I'm done with you. Right? They don't necessarily, I, I don't say they don't like to be touched, I should say they don't need to be touched all the time. They don't need to be held and affectionate. They need their space. Cats need their space. Their number one unconscious fear is loss of control. 
Here's what happens. You guys have all heard of the honeymoon stage? Mm -hmm. In the honeymoon stage, the cat acts like a dog. So the cat is trying to secure the relationship because he, tr he or she truly does like the other person. So they're sending flowers. They're hugging. They're saying, I love you. They're sending the emails and the texts. I'm thinking about you. They're do the cat is doing all of this behavior to secure the relationship. So he, the cat is acting like a dog, which makes the dog feel like, oh, Ah, this, this is good. I love this stuff. But then as the relationships gets more and more secure, the cat st stops demonstrating that behavior and goes back to being the cat. So the dog comes out to secure the relationship, but then the cat goes back to being like a cat, which leaves the dog over here going, what the hell just happened? Hey, remember me? This is what happens. And it's not that the cat means to do any of that. It's just those priorities kick in and what's important, the cat starts to refocus because, hey, I got this. I got this relationship, it's good, I want this relationship. I, I, you know, it's important to me, it is. But now let me go back over here and get my career going and these things are important to me, which leaves the dog going, ah, hello, what just happened, right? Now how do you spot a dog and a cat? Dogs wear clothes that tend to that draw attention because they want the attention put on them. Um, so they expose or show off the body. They wear tight clothes. They wear, you can pick a dog by what they're wearing. They, want the, they wear flashy stuff. Cats in a professional environment are more, are more reserved, more professional. They don't necessarily want um, the, you know, the attention put on them. Dogs talk to everyone. Cats talk to no one. <laughs> Unless it's business. If it's business related, cats are very, they can network because it's all about business. But talk to them about personal stuff, it's like, Shut down. At a party, they're kind of standing off in the corner, watching. Dogs like to touch. Cats like to keep their distance. So if you had ever had a sales coach talk about shaking hands and all of that stuff that we do to create rapport with a person, you know, you come up and put that other hand on that other person and make them feel, oh, the dog loves it, but the cat is like, <laughs> you've just broken rapport with a cat. Yeah. You've just repelled them. So. So it's not true. It's coaches who are teaching you that stuff don't listen to them because they don't understand this stuff. Very important. <laughs> Rapport is critical. We're going to talk about it. Dogs are loud and boisterous, again, because they like attention. Cats are quiet. They speak when they've got something to say. If something piques their interest in a conversation, they will start talking. And if it's really holding their interest, they won't shut up. But if they don't have anything to say, they're very quiet. <coughs> Any cats in the room noticing it? <coughs> Noticing what I'm, this is you, I'm talking to you, okay? Dogs need to tell, here's the thing. In a conversation, we talk about being present with a person and connecting. Dogs need to tell all the details about a story. All the details. Why? Because unconsciously, they don't want to be rejected. So they want you to understand them. So here's Everything that happened. The cat's checked out. You're, you lost the cat a long time ago. Because cats are just the facts, man. Just get to the bottom line. Just tell me what's up. Cats hate talking on the phone. If they have to be on the phone, it's like, let's just get to the freaking bottom line. I don't want to hear this relationship crap. <laughs> Let's get to the bottom line. Don't tell me about your kids. How much is this insurance going to cost me? It's a cat. Got to know that. I just was coaching somebody who's in, also in insurance and, and in sales, and he recognized a cat after I taught him this stuff when he was dealing with a, a client, and it was the biggest sale of his year in terms of commissions, like $48,000 or something, huge. Biggest sale of the year, and because he would have normally, because he's a dog, he would have kept talking and talking. But he recognized he was dealing with a cat, he knew he needed to shut up and let the cat figure it out in his left brain, so it made sense. Gave the cat exactly what he needed, only what he needed, or otherwise he might have lost that sale. So, that's how cats are, just the facts. Dogs don't listen because they're anxious to come up with their side. <laughs> so while you're talking to a dog, they're not hearing what, you, what you're saying because they're racing ahead of the conversation saying, this is what I gotta say. This is what, they're thinking, they're anxious to come up with their side of the story in the conversation. 
<coughs> Cats don't listen because they get bored easily and they check out. So their minds drift to something totally different. So exactly. So nobody's listening to anybody. Dogs expose their emotions. This is how I'm feeling. They kind of wear their emotions on their sleeve. Cats conceal their emotions. So you, you, know, you never quite know what a cat's feeling. You know, unless, unless you do. And they'll tell you. <laughs> and it'll be a quick, short sentence. But they'll tell you how they're feeling. Dogs make decisions quickly and based on emotion because they're mostly in their right brain. Cats make decisions slowly and based on logic. It's got to run through their left brain. So if you've sat with a client and you're wondering why they haven't gotten back to you or they need more information and you're a dog, you're feeling rejected. This, why isn't this guy signing up with me? What did I do? What did I, what did I say wrong in the meeting? You're a dog because you're feeling rejected. But the cat is really in their left brain. Everything has to make sense. And it's got to be in alignment before they make a decision. They've got to run through all the possible details. You follow? That's left brain activity. Now, uh, how do you take this into sales? You know, which one are they? Not just your partnership, but which one are they? When you're dealing with a team environment, which one of your teammates are annoying you? <laughs> and you can't figure out why they're that way. In a sales meeting you know, with a new client, if you can understand what that person is, and you'll get a sense of it even over the phone, just by how they are. Are they talking? Are they talkative over the phone? Are they happy? Are they wanting to talk about kids and relationships and family and sports? Or do they just want to get to the bottom line and they're very short? Are their emails tend to be longer or shorter? And what happens in sales, dealing with emails and phones, you're left to hallucinate. This is a problem. How many of you have ever talked to somebody over the phone and thought they looked one way, but when you met them, they looked nothing like you thought? <laughs> So which one are they? How do you spot this in a relationship? And then you start to talk their language because you start to understand what they need. You need to start to learn how to create rapport and trust with your people and your clients. Here's the deal about rapport in the people business. And let me try to answer it this way, okay, with this slide. Know me, like me, trust me. Then buy from me. Don't come to them with the, all the reasons why Affleck is so great and they need it and ask them to buy from you without establishing know me, like me, trust me first. If you don't establish these three things first, they're not going to buy. You're missing sales. They're not buying Aflac. They're buying you. How you show up determines whether or not you're going to make a sale or not or keep it or keep a client long term. Retention now starts to that you need to maintain this throughout your client relationship. Know me, like me, trust me. That keeps clients um, retaining your business. Because relationships are critical. So know me, like me, trust me. How do you do that? How do you establish rapport? Mary Kay Ash said, pretend every single person you meet has a sign around his or her neck that says, make me feel important. Not only will you succeed in sales, you'll succeed in life. Brilliant. 